Hello, welcome to Lulu Femi. This is your marriage and courtship prep class on TV. Um, today we are interviewing an amazing couple, Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy and Titi Lola Tewe. Um, they've been married for 10 years and for you, what we are interested in in the story is how they got together and all the processes there and after before they are now Mr. and Mrs. The session is very enlightening and I'm sure you have a great time. Right, um, I think that I met her for the first time. That was the first Sunday of September 2002. Um, I used to attend a more popular church at that point in time. And um, in fact, that was the third church that I'd attended. That's Kingswood Church, and that's where I met her. I used to attend the first church, because there's a fine girl I liked there. I used to attend that church. Um, when I realized it wouldn't grieve for me, I decided to move on. So I got to a more stable church. <laughs> And uh, so a friend of mine who was a youth corporate there with me um, invited me and said, oh, come to my church, we have a special program. I was like, no, 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 I'm going to my church. But during the week, I guess I thought about it and I just said to change my mind. And so I said, oh, sure, I'll come to your church on Sunday. So I got there on Sunday. Um, I remember the choir was singing and I was just looking at the choir and I saw this particular lady and she was fine. So I said, ah. So I was still looking at her, like, fine girl, man. I just said, oh, God, I'm sorry, we're in church, I'm here for you. And for the first time, and I'm not lying to you, I asked for a girl's phone number, right? So I asked for her number, and she gave her number, and I asked for her address. I, I was feeling myself that, you know, and then she says, no, she doesn't. I said, it's fine, it's fine, no problem at all. Eventually, she gave it to me and all, and that's how we started, you know, talking. So I remember then, um, I think at work, she would call me, then I'll call her, and then when I, get, uh, when I got home, there was this call center in my house. Those days, you have to go and stop at the business center to make a call and all that, because it's a cheaper option. And I remember that we talked for about 10 minutes, I'll call her. So we pretty much started talking, you know, every day. You know, she would burn her dad's credit, you know, to call me. He caught me several like times. You her. know then, yeah. you could make, we had this. Those, yeah, phones those that. Those phones that you could dial like yeah. that. So, and it was usually locked. So you would tap, 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 tap. Mm -hmm. So I used to tap, tap, tap. So when I was talking, I was talking to my mother and said, hello. <laughs> Lala! You know, yeah, you know? So we, like yeah. anyway, you know, so that's how it was. And then I'm, one particular morning, it's a Sunday morning, I woke up. So I prayed the prayer to God. I said, God, you know I like this girl. This is not a prayer of Lord, let your will be done. Hmm? Alone. So I said, God, you know I like her. You see my heart. But I really want the best, you know. I, there's a reason for this relationship, you know. If it's marriage, let me know. And as soon as I prayed that prayer, I had this very strange peace, like real heavy. Like peace, like, oh yeah, go ahead. So, and I said to myself, I'll call her during the day. So when it was time for me to call, I'm reaching out for the phone, and then the phone rings, the office line. So I picked the phone, I say, hello, good afternoon, Rich Talk Consulting. And I, the person goes, it's me, Lola. I'm like, oh, how are you? I'm just going to call you now. She says, I want to ask you something. So I'm like, okay. She says, can I take you out on your birthday? I'm like, eh? So, all right, so I was like, on one condition, I now became a woman. <laughs> on one condition, so I says, that I'll take you out after, right? So we basically, Agreed, and uh, on my birthday we went. It was a sweet sensation in Oba, nothing too fancy. Um, so we're eating, and ordered the food. Or right? we're eating, and in the middle of the conversation, she just talks and says, "So Jimmy, I want to ask you something." I'm like, "Yes." So she goes, "You think I'll say it?" All right? I can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember. I can't forget. All right. So uh, she says, um, "I don't know how you feel about me, but I know how I feel about you, and I think we need to talk about it." Ah. Really? Okay. So. <laughs> Um, I started, so at that point, I had to declare my manifesto, you know, declare my intentions and all that. She goes, okay, I've heard, ah, and also uh, said, let me think about it, you know, generally and all this kind of thing. Um, but she was excited, it was a struggle to go through it, the conversations reduced, I'm like, ah, what's going on with this chick? What? Because I asked you, ah, what's up? You know, but I, I remember then I went to Ibadan for Christmas and I was having a particular meeting with some young men that I mentored at that point in time. And she called and said, you know, she friends on me, like, blah, blah, you know, just like, I think we should just be friends, you know, the lines and all that. I'm like, okay, I've heard you. So because I found out he was from Ondo, it affected me a lot, you know, a lot. I didn't want to marry an Ondo man. I had aunties that had gotten hooked to Ondo guys and were no longer married. So that for me was real. So it was part of the things, you know, that were keeping me away from saying yes. But I said, let me do something last time. So I got to her house that day. And um, as a custom was, he wasn't answering me, she wasn't talking. So after I finished talking to every other person, I just said to her, I'm going. She says, bye. Ah. I said, no, walk me to the gate. And there was something about my voice that made her look at me like, so she walked me to the gate of the house. I said, no, the gate of the estate. So I walk into the gate of the estate, quiet and all that. And when we got to the gate of the estate, I just turned and said to her, I said, you know what? 
even if you want to push people away, don't lose true friends. I don't know what, you know, I said something like that, you know, and I turned around and entered the bus and I went home. But ladies, let me say something, you know, we try to create something for ourselves. I want him to be tall. I want him to be this. I want him to do that. God might have the same um, person you want in another package. The question is, would you be willing to receive or accept the package? I had struggles, you know, I struggled with it for a very, for like eight, ten months. You know, I struggled with just the fact that he was dark, he was from Undo, his parents were not together. But hey, his parents came back together, the Undo didn't matter, the age didn't matter after a while. Because I had to sit down and say, Lola, what exactly do you want in a home? Is he respectful? Does he respect you? Does he love you? Is he understanding? And does he fear God? My husband fears God. You know, and I wanted, that was what I wanted. A lot of times we look on the outside, but what really would keep you going are the values and the things the guy, you know, or the lady believes in. So I had all of those, and I was glad I had someone, number one, you know, on the list, very, very fearing, God-fearing. And I think that put my heart at rest. And God, in a way, was like telling me, Lola, I've got your back, I've got you covered. And today... I'm grateful to God. All right, for guys, I, I think that I think I was having a conversation with someone this week about that. Uh, you find that there's a lot of young guys now. So I told somebody some days ago that I got married when I was 27. I was like, that's young. And I'm like, no, I don't think it's young. Um, I think that a lot of younger guys today, they want to make it, you know, and not like they're not doing okay, but they want to really make it, you know, before. And what that does is a mindset that makes the wife an acquisition. Right, and that's what happens, and it's unconscious, you know, where you now get to a point that I now have enough money, I have a car, I have a house, I can now get a wife. No, a courtship is a practice of marriage, minus sex, all right? It's a courtship of marriage, right? And even in, including the sex part, is self-control, because in marriage you still need self-control. And let me be very honest, one of the reasons why a guy would dump a lady like that is because he slept with her. There's something about sex, and I always like to say that once you begin to explore that part, every other part shuts down. You're not interested in those things. But when you close the door of sex in courtship, you are forced to understand that person. You are forced to know that person. You know, finding out that I was a little older than him was a big issue for me. You know, I would sit down out and I was like, oh my God, I like this guy, but what would I tell people? What would people think? How would we do this? You know, and that went on for a very long time. And um, I guess that all the while he was thinking, okay, this girl was playing hard to get. I wasn't playing hard to get. I had things I was thinking about, you know, age, you know. One day I was studying the Bible about this thing, about age and all that. And I found out that in um, Genesis chapter 3, I believe, yeah? Genesis chapter 3, that what had happened was that um, God had said to Adam, you know, that I'm putting this tree in the garden, don't touch it, right? Then the next thing that God now says is that it's not good for man to be alone. So before the issue of marriage came up, the issue of maturity, and that's what it is, seeing something you can do and not refusing, and refusing not to do it, is maturity. So maturity is what enables you to become married, not age. So you can be 37,000 years old. If you're still a boy, you will have problems with marriage. Is it good or bad? Valentine to me, if it was done under the normal, just mm -hmm. like having sent some some St. Mm -hmm. Patrick's Day, mm -hmm. if it was done with enough well, sanity, yeah. you know, I think it would be okay. But now you see ladies going all out to get a guy, to you know, you go out, to, you go off just because okay, I want a guy, and you do things you wouldn't have done on a normal day because you want to enjoy Valentine. Now, if, it's, if that's the case, I would say don't have Valentine. Mm -hmm. Valentine doesn't add to you in that sense, doesn't add to who you are. You are who you are before Valentine's Day came. And if you add values before Valentine's Day came, I don't think Valentine's Day should erode your values. So really, what are your values? What are you looking out for? Who are you? Are you who do you see yourself as? Do I see myself as you know, someone that needs... If you have a low self-esteem... Valentine's Day would <laughs> definitely affect really, you. Yeah. You would end up sleeping with a guy because you want something. And at the end of the day, the guy you felt was going to give you something might not even give you anything on that day. So a lot of ladies should beware 
of what they do or how they spend their Valentine's. We're not saying you shouldn't go out. You can go out, have fun with friends, but don't erode your values because you want to enjoy Valentine's Day. So set the boundaries far. So all this Netflix and chill, right? Two of you are watching movies together alone. I'm telling you, the devil will turn up. I'm telling you, right? And then initially it looks a little, a little, little hair there. And, but, and the way that sex is designed is that if I kiss you the first time, I mean, if that first time you feel like, wow, oh God, I'm sorry, you know, and, but inside of you are like, wow, that wasn't bad, that wasn't bad. But if you do it again, after a while you get bored, then you want to do the next thing. Then you want to, and you just get it to the boy, you just say, I beg, let me go on. So I made up my mind, and we made up my mind to say, no kissing. So the first time she got into my house, we dated for two and a half years. And I'm not saying this as a saint. God help me. That days I'll see, I'll be like, Jesus, help me. You understand? I had those days and all that, you know, and that's when you need the grace of God. I tell you, if you train yourself to be sleeping with each other before marriage, you probably will train yourself to sleep with other people after marriage. Because when you now get married, and this is where I'm going to, um, you will get to those points where sex can become boring. And what should happen in sex, you know, for marriage is you are meant to converse and now reinvent, all right? And make it more exciting. That's what you need to do. Not to say, I'm tired of having sex in my life and all that. Let me go and look for something new outside. You need to reinvent and all that. And when you're not having the conversations, you will look for something outside if you're not careful. And if something outside comes to meet you, you are more likely to fall. What do you do during courtship? You go out a lot, you spend the time, um, a lot of time knowing each other. In open, in open atmosphere. atmosphere. What we did was, like you said, we, made, we had some rules and the church we attended at the time, and we still do now, you know, gave us some rules. You don't stay under the same roof with the same guy. You don't stay in alone. a guy's house alone. You don't stay in a guy's house till 9 p.m. and you're wondering, ah, maybe I should just pass That's the night here. Final words. Um, ladies need to calm down. You know, I talk to ladies a lot. And, you know, I have people tell me, ah, oh, Lola, I need this. If I don't do it now, it's going to leave me. If I don't, you know, and I always tell them, calm down. Calm down. Don't be in a hurry to get a guy. Don't be in a hurry to get married, you know. Someone still told me, you don't understand, I'm 27, I'm 30, it doesn't matter. It's better you get it right than get in and want to jump out. Mm -hmm. So ladies, calm down. It looks like the right guy for you, calm down. Don't make decisions in a haste. Don't make decisions that you'll regret tomorrow. Don't make decisions because of what your friends are saying. Don't make decisions because of your fears. Don't make decisions because you feel, ah, you know, I'm going to lose him. Calm down, calm down, take it easy, get mentors, and be free to open up. A lot of times we don't open up, you don't want someone to, people to know what's going on in your life. The earlier you open up and get help, the better. And at times, it's not as if we don't know what to do, but you just need, you know, counsel. You know, in knowing, okay, I've done this like this, or this is what I'm thinking about, what do you think? Get counsel and commit everything to God, and you'll be fine. The relationship you need first before a man is a relationship with God. Because that is what will keep your man. Trust me, it is not your capacity to have sex with a man that will keep your husband. It's his ability to fear God and then your ability to pray for him also that matters. So build your own personal relationship with God no more. Number two, I like to tell you that there's nothing really as attractive as a woman that is pursuing her purpose. All right? It's very attractive to a man. A, a woman that looks like a liability is not attractive compared to one that is an asset. The liability is one that takes one is one that gives you right to you. So for ladies, I like to say to you that look, you know, be the best version of you. All right, like my wife said, you know, invest in yourself. You know, develop the three dimensions of your life: your spiritual life, your mental and emotional, and, and that's soul. Your how you think. You know, your capacity to think and all that. One of the things that puts me off from a lady is a lady that is not very bright. All right. For men, I think that my one final word to you is. Uh, the biggest concern right now is about responsibility. Um, right now, your bad men are called your bad demons, right? Okay, uh, and that really is because they say they enter a woman's life and they scatter the woman's life. And that shouldn't be the testimony of a man. The strength of a man is not an ability to go around sp spreading the sperm around. It's his ability to have it and keep it to himself. It takes a stronger man to be celibate if he's not married, all right, yet, all right, than a man that goes around. It's a weak man that goes around, you know, sleeping around with anything that moves around. Trust me, he's not a strong man, okay? Uh, and so your ability to be like that, to be focused, um, uh, to be able to become a person that people aspire to. You know, the Bible says about wives, so wives should submit to their husbands, but a woman will only submit to a man that she respects. So if you don't earn and they say respect must be earned, then that's the truth about it. 
So you have to earn your respect by building trust and that is showed in strength of character and competence also. So Hello, welcome to the expert segment of the Ludi Family TV show. My name is Gabriel Alatsun, the legend, and I am popularly called Mr. Legend. I am a relationship coach. Today, I want to talk on how to love. What is really love? What is love in its real sense? Mm, how do we love? First of all, I think love has nothing to do with expectation. I think uh, love is basically giving. Yes, talks for people. Call them regularly, check on them, pray for them. You can do it secretly, you can do it openly. Love is not something you can explain in words. It's, it's the way you feel. Someone else shouldn't feel the same. I mean, it, it's just. You can't explain it. And as Christians, we must ask ourselves who you really love, who simplify, who exemplify love. What did you do for God to love you? Was it because you were beautiful, you were handsome, you spoke intelligently, you had an amazing hair, or you had very public figure or you are just an amazing person. Did you ever do something to qualify for his love? The truth is, you did not do anything to qualify for that love. And in our whole love relationship on earth with the man and the woman, a lot of the times we expect the man to be very beautiful, the man to be very handsome, or the woman to have some certain uh, shape or certain qualities. Now, these qualities are not bad, but we must understand that these things are not love in themselves. They may aid love, but they are not love. That's what I'm trying to pass across to you. If it was because of all the things that you did that Christ loved you, a lot of us would not qualify. So in your love relationship, stop trying to look for Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. Stop trying to get someone who has it all. If the person does not have it, you must understand that love is unconditional. Love is something that you can both sit together and work out. It is not because of what they have. It is not because of what they possess. You must love a person for who they are. One of the ways to prove to a person that you love them on a regular basis is to forgive them in advance. As long as you have determined in your heart that this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, the person has already checked all of your own checklist. Stop getting bothered about all of those other extra things that you desire, that you love, that they have, that they probably do not have. If you can work on them for them to have it, please do. But if they don't have it, let those things not be the defining moment or the defining decisions for you. The job is to what? Love them unconditionally. Forgive them in advance. The proof of love is giving. Give to them. Give to them. Don't forget this. Don't ever forget this. If you want to truly love a person, and this is the best way to love a person, is to love the person not because of what the person is doing or what the person has done but because of who the person is this is how god loved you and this is how we want to love you this is what he expects of love of us till i meet you again keep the fire burning